Hello, everyone. In this video, we will be talking about projectile motion. Projectile motion is motion in two dimensions. Examples of projectile motion would be shooting a basketball into a hoop or throwing a football to your friend. These are some very common examples of projectile motion. Unlike what you've been seeing so far, projectile motion involves looking at the motion in not one but two dimensions. So, a common trajectory path for a projectile will look something like this, like a parabola. Now, let's draw a coordinate axis so we can more clearly see how the motion is proceeding. So, we see that the projectile starts here and ends its motion here. So that means there was an x-axis change or displacement. Hence, there was a velocity. Now, we know the projectile goes up to a certain height and then comes back down. Now, as the projectile is going up, it has a vertical y velocity. Now, y displacement. And then when it turns back around after a half point on, on its motion, it has a y velocity in the opposite direction. So we see that the motion is in two dimensions. How differently would we solve problems involving kinematics when we're looking at these two dimensions? Best way always is to split up your, split up your problem into the separate axes. So split your page in half, one side for the x-axis, other side for the y-axis. And on each axis, then you list all of your kinematic variables. So you have initial velocity, final velocity, displacement, time, and acceleration. Same thing on the y-axis. You have initial velocity, final velocity, displacement, time, and acceleration. And using the kinematic equations you've seen before, you can find the missing variables in each axis. That part will be very similar to how you've been doing kinematics so far. Now, what's important is to make sure you're splitting up the axes correctly. So if you look at the velocity vector for this projectile, we'll see that it will look something more like this, like a little diagonal. Now, that means that it has an x component and a y component. So you split up your uh, velocity vector or displacement vector in this way. Here, we're looking at velocity. So if we're considering, let's say, the initial velocity of this projectile, this would be the initial velocity in the x, initial velocity in the y, and this is the actual initial velocity in two dimensions. Now, let's look at an example problem. Now, let's look at this example problem. Let's say we take a rock and we throw it horizontally off a cliff that is 70 meters tall. And when the rock lands on the ground, away from the base of the cliff, it lands 150 meters away from the base of this cliff. I want to know what the horizontal velocity is of the rock when it is thrown from the top of the cliff. How do we approach this kind of problem? So first step is always to split up the problem into its respective axes. So we have the x-axis and the y-axis and list all the known variables in each axis for the kinematic variables. So we have initial velocity, which is the value we're looking for. We do not know final velocity. There's acceleration, displacement, and time. Now, in the x-axis, there is no air resistance in consideration. So the rock will not speed up or slow down in any scenario. So we consider the acceleration in the x-axis always as 0 when we're considering projectile motion. We know the displacement in the x-axis is 150 meters. Now, let's move to the y-axis, initial velocity. Now, key word in that problem was that the rock is thrown horizontally off the top of the cliff. Now, since the rock is thrown only in the x direction, it has a velocity only in the x axis when it begins its motion at the top of the cliff. So the initial velocity in the y axis would be 0 whenever it is stated like that in the problem. We do not know final velocity, acceleration. Now, since the rock is on Earth, we know the acceleration will be due to gravity. And gravity always exerts the same amount of acceleration, which is 
9.8 meters per second squared. Now, take care when considering projectile motion problems when we're considering acceleration and gravity. It affects the motion differently depending on the direction in which the rock is moving. Let's say the rock was thrown upwards. When it is throwing upwards, it has a y velocity given to it by the force exerted. But as gravity keeps pulling it down, it's actually slowing the rock down. But in this case, since the rock is throwing is thrown horizontally off and it's going towards the ground, it has a positive acceleration in the y-axis. We know the height of the cliff is 70 meters, which will be a displacement in the y, and we don't know time. Now, an important thing we, we must keep in mind is we should know at least three of these variables to be able to use these kinematic equations to solve for a fourth variable. The variable we want to know is the initial velocity in the x-axis, but we only know two variables in the x-axis. Now, important, a great thing, the tool that we have is that there's a sort of a bridge between the two axes, which is time. Time is the same for both axes. Now, if we solve for time in the y-axis, we can use that to solve for our initial velocity in the x-axis. So, which kinematic equation do you think would work best? It would be the third one. So, we know displacement is 70 meters in the y-axis. We know initial velocity is 0, so our first term will be 0, plus 1 half times 9.8 times the time squared. Now, all we must do is solve for time. When we do that, we get time is 3.78 seconds, which we can use on both sides of the axes. Now that we have our three known variables, we can solve for our initial velocity. We will again use the same third, third kinematic equation to solve for our initial velocity. We know displacement is 150 meters per 150 meters in the x-axis. We do not know initial velocity, and we do know time. And our acceleration is zero. So our second term in this equation will be zero. And once we solve for velocity, we get 39. 0.7 meters per second, which is, what, which is what the horizontal velocity of the rock was when it was thrown off the top of the cliff. Now, you can name these variables however you seem fit or is more comfortable for you, but this is the best approach to take whenever you're dealing with projectile motion problems. Always split up the axes and then solve for the variables in each axis separately. Thank you for watching and see you for the next video. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what physics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the said Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website at www.baylor.edu. tutoring you may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one -on -one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.